So now that we know about continuous random variables, we can start to talk about the expected value just like we did for discrete random variables. So we're going to return to this idea, expected value, but for continuous random variables. So let's remember what we talked about in the discrete case. The expected value was the sum over all the possible outcomes that I could get, the value of the outcome times the PMF, or the probability of getting that outcome. Okay. So now I'm in a world where I don't have just have a set of outcomes I can count on my fingers. I have an infinite possible number of outcomes, so I can't just do a simple sum. I have to integrate basically over the whole real line. So the definition in the continuous world is the expected value is an integral over all the possible outcomes. And now I'm multiplying this by the PDF and integrating dt, right? So here, this was a PMF, this is a PDF, and then each of these things is basically the value of an outcome, right? So it's not actually very different than what we had before. And in fact, you can show that when I think about the PMF as a sum of a bunch of uh, shifted and scaled delta functions, that actually these are the very same definition. I'm not going to do that right now, but basically there's no conflict here. It's actually all the same thing. So this is the bad news, is that solving expected value problems in continuous time always involves a lot of integration. So let's just do an example. Let's suppose that I have the uniform random variable, uniform between A and B. So that means that the PDF has to have height 1 over b minus a. I know that that has to be the height because that's, first of all, the definition, and second of all, the integral under this curve has to be equal to 1, right? So what is the expected value of x? And let me just remind us, this is a uniform random variable. Well, I integrate across the whole real line, t times the PDF. Now I can make some substitutions. So I know that the PDF is zero outside of a and b and the value inside a and b is one over b minus a which is like a constant and so i can take this out like so so i have one over b minus a the integral is one half t squared from t equals b to t equals a then i have one over b minus a times um, this part is one half b squared minus one half a squared. And by doing some factoring, I can kind of reduce this to one half of a plus b. And I look back at my picture and I see, oh, this makes sense, right? Because this is like saying that the expected value of the uniform random variable is this point right in the middle. Okay. And that's always going to be true for a PDF that is symmetric around the middle. Okay, so um, generally um, the expected value for a symmetric PDF is the middle point. And for a really sketchy proof of why that's true, what I could imagine is to say, okay, suppose I've got some sort of arbitrary um, PDF as long as everything integrates to one, things are okay. And let's suppose that the um, symmetry point is mu, which I don't yet know is the mean. Then I could look at the function t minus mu. That looks like this. And this is kind of where I note that this is an even function and this is an odd function. And so the product of these things is also going to be an odd function. It's going to look probably something like this, right? And what's going to happen when I integrate this function? Well, there's half of the stuff here and half of the stuff here. So when I integrate this function, I'm going to get zero because the negative part balances out the positive part. And so what does that mean? It means that the integral of t minus mu times the PDF is equal to zero. A different way of saying that is that I have this integral, I have to put a dt here, equals this integral, 
right? This is just the whole integral of the PDF, which equals one. This is what I defined as the expected value. And so in this way, I kind of showed in a, in a simple way that anything that's symmetric around the middle, that symmetry point is in fact the expected value. And that's why the Gaussian, which has a PDF that looks like this, you know, has um, mean equal to mu, which is the middle point that it's symmetric around, right? So I don't have to do any sort of fancy integral to prove why that is true, okay? Unfortunately, I do have to do a fancy integral if I actually don't have a symmetric PDF, right? So let's suppose I'm looking at the exponential PDF. We talked about that a while back. Remember that the definition of the PDF was lambda e to the minus lambda x for positive values of x and for some positive lambda. So what is the expected value? It's going to be the integral from, I'm just going to write down the definition. This is the basic definition. And in our situation, the PDF is zero when things are less than zero. And then I substitute in this thing for um, when x is greater than or equal to zero. So this is the point where, you know, this is not like an obvious integral to do. Um, option one is to go to somewhere like Wolfram Alpha, which is okay if you're solving a homework or doing something quickly, but if you're doing an exam on paper and you want to show the integral, you should know how to do this kind of thing. This is probably easiest to do on paper by integration by parts, right? So let's just do that on a separate piece of paper. So this is the integral I need to solve. I can say, okay, my u part is going to be t. My dv part is going to be lambda e to the minus lambda t. That means my du is going to be uh, dt. And my v is going to be minus e to the minus lambda t. And then that means that this integral is basically uv. We're writing this as like integral of... Um, UDV, so this is going to be uh, UV is minus T e to the minus lambda T evaluated at this set of limits minus VDU is going to be basically plus this integral so if I evaluate this, I get, I plug in infinity, e to the minus infinity decays faster than this, so I get zero at the top. I plug in zero, I get zero at the bottom, so this whole thing is equal to zero. So all I have is this thing, which is, again, um, minus one over lambda, e to the minus lambda t, from t equals infinity to t equals zero. Plug in infinity, I get zero. Plug in zero, I get one over lambda. Okay, so I did all this work to find out the expected value of the exponential random variable is one over lambda. And so this kind of makes sense because remember when we defined the exponential random variable, we said that lambda was basically the number of expected arrivals per second is, is kind of one way to think about it. And so the expected value then is the expected number of seconds per arrival, which is the inverse. So this is something, again, that you, know, you can look up in a table. And when you're doing a homework problem that involves some known random variable, then oftentimes they'll say, okay, it's okay for you to use the tables to be able to just pull out the means and variances of things that you might need to know about. And I'll do a, a video in a couple of minutes where we're going to talk about like using known expected values of named random variables to make life easier. So it's not like you have to do this complicated integral every time you do an expected value, but there may be cases where you have to pull it out, especially for something that is not one of our named random variables. So look for a lesson a couple videos from now for some practice problems on that.